Now each year students come to me asking me for help with work experience for medical applications in the UK. Help me! And each year without fail we manage to get each of the students a work placement very very comfortably. It's so hard to care when you're this relaxed. Now I'm going to show you step by step how we get the students to do so. Number one, write a letter to all the GPs in your local area. Now I mean all of them and even reach out further than your local area if you are looking to really maximize your chances. A lot of people who can offer you work experience are really busy people so you need to show that persistence and keep knocking on their door until they let you in. Don't just apply for one and hope for the best. That's a plan for disaster. Because of COVID there have been some changes to a lot of surgeries so you may find this option slightly restrictive. So let's look at option number two. Call the hospital volunteering switchboard. So now each hospital has their own volunteering switchboard and you, when you ring them up, you'll be able to find where that is. So I have found from my previous students that emailing them works better than calling them. This is definitely not Siri, but here is a bonus tip for hospitals. Look for specific departments in the hospital you are interested in and find the consultants and surgeons email. Then simply email them about your interest and hopefully you should hear back from them. Uh, this goes without saying if you're well connected example your parents are doctors consultants surgeons etc then your chances of finding work experience are significantly higher but what about if you're not from that background well you're going to have to grind the hard way so you can ring up hospices elderly care homes you can volunteer at a soup kitchen volunteer with disabled children and adults most of these have rotations of volunteers for about one year and they tend to leave in around july august time so it really, really helps if you get in there early and grab one of those slots. These are a good set of volunteering and work experience activities if you cannot secure in-hospital placements. We are an aging population. We are a population where we have poverty and we definitely have disability. All of these opportunities should be plentiful around you. And nowadays you can also do online ones but these should be your last resort. The two popular ones are BSMS and Observe GP. There's also the Medic Mentor work experience that they offer online however I would advise that you guys stay away from that because everyone does it and it doesn't really help you stand out. It's the very basics in my eyes that is covered in those sessions and a lot of students tend to think that if they've done that that is sufficient to show your passion for your medical course. Perhaps you're not able to directly shadow a doctor or a GP or anyone in particular, but you may be able to speak to them. Maybe you can have a half an hour Zoom call with them, right? Just so they can download some of that information from their brain into your brain, just so you understand how the healthcare system works. In a nutshell, the earlier you apply, the better your chances of getting work experience. If your first work placement doesn't quite work out and you don't quite like it, I hate it here you still have some time to apply to another work placement. This also means that you can potentially get access to the longer work placements which are more beneficial to you from your development point of view and look way better in your application. It really does pay off to start early with your work experience placements. Work experience is actually a great opportunity for you to network with doctors, consultants, uh, junior doctors and so on and so forth. You may need some of those contacts in the future. Depending on the type of work placement that you get, you may also happen to learn about a particular speciality one that you may be interested in or a completely new speciality that you learn about hands-on work experience allows you to dig deeper into the healthcare sector by really seeing what's under the hood from the other side and finally like most jobs it helps you improve your communication skills places the children's hospital in the emergency department and that was for about two months three or four hour shift every monday morning and i also did shadowing at the maxillofacial unit of a hospital there were some pretty interesting things that happened one of the things that happened in the maxillofacial unit when i was in the theatres, operating theatres, there was this sort of administrative error where there weren't enough hospital beds for the patients for after they've had their operations. Everything was just on standstill for a little bit. The surgeons had been operating all day from about nine in the morning 
and it came to about three, four o'clock and they had two patients left to see and each operation is about four hours. And they all sort of gathered together and they said, look, what are we gonna do? So you had an anaesthetist, you had a couple of surgeons and then the consultant surgeon and then also all of the nurses in the operating room. And they said, are we going to stay here until nine, 10 o'clock doing these operations? Because we've been here all day or are we gonna go home? and then we can do them another time. But then they all sort of came to the unanimous decision that we need to stay here. It doesn't matter that we're tired. There's been a mistake in administration and if these patients aren't seen, they're gonna be waiting for a really long time. And as they started talking about the patients, they all sort of came around, their perspective shifted and you could see the attitude in the room change. They went from sort of feeling just tired, you know, as human beings who've been working all day to people who really do put their patients first. This theatre, it's all sort of um, cancer patients and removing growths that could be cancerous. So everybody just sort of went from being, I don't really want to stay, I'm super tired, to saying, no, we need to put our patients first. And I just thought it was really lovely. Can you talk about it, A, in your personal statement, and B, in your interview? So how do you effectively talk about it? Well, there is something that I call the experience factory. Something that I've come up with, which I think is a useful tool to capture all your work experience, all of your other activities that you've done. So you can see which one you really want to talk about in your personal statement, in your interview, and which one is the most beneficial. You need to fill in each column with your own information and experience and the dates, etc. You sit down and then you rate it. You think, okay, this is the best thing that I learned and I'm going to rate this one. This is the third best thing that I learned, I'm going to rate this three. So schools are really assessing you on what you're learning from these experiences. If you can't articulate the value that you got from these placements in your personal statement, then pretty much most of your work placement was a bit of a waste of time. What they really care about is what you've learned. And that's what this work experience template captures. If you want access to this, drop a comment down below and I will send it out personally to each and every individual that leaves a comment on this YouTube video for free. So those are your surefire techniques to get yourself a medical work placement. Subscribe and goodbye.